Good afternoon, everyone. Today I'll be talking about the Laborde 1 osteotomy. These are the instrumentation necessary for the surgery. In the preoperative phase, I'll be addressing the patient, answering any type of questions or concerns he may have, obtaining the surgical consent, and applying the oral surgery head wrap. In the OR, we'll be having a team huddle with the anesthesia provider the circulator, and also the surgical assistants. The highlights will include details of the procedure, um, hypotensive anesthesia, and nasal intubation. Once the patient has been intubated, we want to protect his or her eyes through the application of lacquer lube and tegonum. Next, we want to secure the airway because head movement occurs during our uh, procedure. We want to confirm the nasal tracheal tube depth with the anesthesia team. For single jaws, I like to use a surgical te technique in which one inch dura bore is split in half, halfway, and the one inch is applied over the dorsum of the tongue, dorsum of the nose, and then the split portion is used to secure the nasal tracheal tube. Next, the pallet line is wrapped around the, the nasal tracheal tube, and the pallet balloon is secured somewhere by the forehead to allow easy access for the anesthesia provider. We want to maintain the position of the patient's head through um, placement of bilateral sandbags. Next, we want to use the flexible connector to attach to the nasal tracheal tube in order for the circuit to exit the field in a superior direction. The circuit will be secured to the patient at the forehead and also top the head through paddings with gauze and surgical tape. Next, attention will be turned intraorally where throat pack will be placed. Patient's um, dentition will be cleaned through a toothbrush and also paradex. Local anesthesia will be applied through various in, um, nerve blocks and infiltrations. Then the scrub Scrub nurse is going to be directed to prep our patient with betadine from his forehead all the way to his clavicles, including the nasal tracheal tube. Once we're scrubbed in, four surgical towels will be placed to isolate the field along with a split drape. The superior surgical towel will be stapled around the nasal tracheal tube. Finally, the bed is positioned uh, in a way which will allow our assistant to have access to the top of the uh, head to retract during the procedure. The goal of our osteotomy is to free the maxilla completely to allow us to fixate the maxilla into the new position through a series of plates and screws. Prior to incision, we want to make sure we get a vertical reference of our maxilla. And for a single jaw, normally I use the medial canthus and the upper um, orthodontic bracket of one of the incisors. Prior to incision, our scrub tech is directed to use two toe-in retractors to expose the vestibule for us. The incision will extend from molar to molar, one centimeter past the mucal gingival junction. We could use the Colorado tip. Once the initial incision is made, the Colorado tip is angled perpendicular to the alveolar bone in order to prevent injuries to the infraoral nerve as well as the, the buccal fat pad. So, arterial dissection is completed superiorly to expose the infraoral nerve. At this point, our surgical tech is directed to help us. We track medial to the nerve and over the zygomatic buttress for us to expose the pterygoal maxillary junction laterally and the piriform rim uh, medially. Switching instruments from the 9 mole to the curved freer will be dissecting the delicate nasal vitrosa. With the curve end, we'll be initiating the dissection over the lateral nasal wall in the floor of the nose, and with the broad end, we'll be continuing um, the dissection posterior, posteriorly on the, in these two um, areas.
Next, this is our image of the retraction necessary for the horizontal osteotomy. Our system will be retracting medial to the infraobral nerve and the, over the zygomatic buttress. Two self-retaining retractors will be placed, one at the lateral um, nasal wall. This could be a ribbon retractor, periosteal, or a sater, and one at the lateral aspect of our maxilla, which is going to be a toe-in retractor. The inferior extent of our horizontal osteotomy is going to be five millimeters superior to the apices of our dentition. The horizontal osteotomy is completed with a reciprocating saw going from lateral to medial. We want to have a second assistant irrigate and suction for us. We also want to take note that as we move medially, we want to angle the recip saw more and more parallel to the lateral nasal wall. Next, we'll be completing the osteotomy at the lateral nasal wall. This is completed with a single guarded nasal osteotome with slow um, mallet hits. We want to go posterior and lateral until we meet firm resistance or hear a dull sound. And this would mark the end of our osteotomy at the pyramidal process of the palatine bone. At this point, anesthesia should be notified to initiate hypotensive anesthesia prior to separation of the nasal septum. The nasal septum can be separated through um, by a two, a double-sided, double-guarded um, nasal osteotome going inferiorly, posteriorly. Um, sometimes it's difficult to aim the osteotome inferiorly because of the hard sept septal crust that is present. So the osteotomy can be initiated initially with a small straight osteotome to penetrate the septal crust. And then the double guarded osteotome can be used to separate the nasal crust of the palatine bone from the vulva. Our final osteotomy is going to be the pterygoid ma maxillary junction. And this osteotomy is very difficult to visualize, so typically the curved or pterygoid osteotome is positioned um, behind your tuberosity, and with tactile sensation, a group should be able to palpate it at this particular um, position. Also, with our off hand, we're going to be using the finger to uh, insert intraorally to palpate the posterior aspect of the tuberosity. The angulation of our osteotome should be completed in an inferior, medial, and anterior direction in order to avoid damage to our inter um, internal mastery artery and the pterygoid plexus. Because this portion has have hard, dense bone, the mallet should be used in the uh, whip like fashion in order for the osteotome to engage firmly into bone. And also, the osteotome can be twisted to propagate the fracture in a favorable direction. Prior to down fracture, anesthesia, um, we should confirm with anesthesia that hypotensive anesthesia has been achieved. We're looking for a map of 50 to 65 or 30% um, decrease from patient's baseline. With a J-hook over the nasal cell, we apply very gentle force inferiorly to uh, down fracture the maxilla. While down fracturing the maxilla, we can use our um, freer elevator and our Fraser tip to slowly dissect the, muco, um, the nasal mucosa to avoid any type of tears. At this point, we could also place a ray tech on either side of the maxilla to decrease bleeding. We want to mobilize the maxilla through 
um, a Rodus in Passion Force F, or we could use a Tessier hook, um, placed at the posterior portion of the mastery tuberosity, applying force anteriorly and to the contralateral side. If we meet any resistance, bone reduction can um, be completed to allow complete separation. Most of the time, um, this is going to occur during the posterior aspect of our osteotomy by our pterygoid maxillary junction or the primal process of our palat palatine bone. Rongiers, kerosene, or rotary burrs can be used for bone reduction. It's very important to um, be careful of the descending palatine artery at this point. Once our maxilla is completely mobilized, we could take this time to repair our um, uh, lacerated nasal mucosa or remove uh, disease lining of the sinus if desired. And we will be placing our occlusal stent at this point with 26 gauge wires going through the inner dental holes and ligating them, ligating them to the surgical lugs of our uh, orthodontic appliance. Once the surgical guide is secured, we'll be moving the maxilla into the new position and then ligating the top and bottom jaw into fixation through our 26 gauge um, fishes and well, wire drivers. We'll be ligating the posterior as well as the anterior and on top of the wires, elastic will be used in case any of the uh, wires lose any give. Next, we'll be placing the mandible into the centric relationship position in which the condyle is in the anterior superior midmost. If there's any difficulty regarding a reproducible position, we could ask the anesthesia provider to administer, administering some paralytics to decrease muscle tone. We also want to make sure that there are no interferences um, at our maxilla. If there is, we could reduce these interferences at the lines of our osteotomy. Once our maxilla is in a favorable position, we will examine the nasal aperture and we can recontour these areas if uh, impaction is completed by deepening the grooves uh, to allow um, ample room in the nasal cavity. Finally, we're going to be positioning the, um, the maxillal um, complex into the CR position again and applying fixation of our maxilla. This is achieved through four L plates over the piriform rim and the zygomatic buttress as these two areas have the um, heaviest bone stock. Once fixation is completed, we will be removing our internal maxillary fixation and confirming the occlusion, which will tell us um, that the maxilla is fixated into its proper position. If there's a large gap that um, occurs from our positioning of the maxilla in cases of down grafting, um, bone graft can be considered in, in these cases. With our Lafour osteotomy, we will have a dissection and exposure of the paranasal musculature and that will widen our nasal base. To control that postoperatively, we'll do the alar sense suture, in which we'll grab the nasal labial muscles and tie them together with a 2 0 PGA suture. Also, controlling for soft tissue profile, um, we want to control the, lip, the lip length and vermilion show through a B to Y closure. Once this closure is completed, um, our surgery uh, is completed as well. We'll be irrigating the oral cavity and removing the throat pack.